Hey everybody, I'm Joshua. And I'm Caleb. We're brothers. Good day to you. As brothers though, I feel that I need to be a brother to you. Okay. I feel the need today to be honest and transparent. If my iron is to be sharp, uh -huh. if I am to be honest and confess my sins, uh -oh. if I am to count all the beads of Miss Rosary, uh -huh. and if I am to hail the Mary out there properly to forgive this, I have to tell you first. Oh no. Oh no, God. I have been freebasing Krispy Kreme ice cream, wearing spandex and listening to the Jonas Brothers backwards what? under a full moon, and I hadn't been able to stop myself. I hope that me being transparent with this will relieve me of the seduction of that horrible combination. Wow. Wow. Well, this leads to a question, Josh. What if we are all just terrible sinners? Horrible, saved by grace, of course. But what? What if we just can't sin? Stop sinning like him, you know? I don't know how to I, stop. And, and you it's need so an tempting. accountability partner. You need you need some wise old mentor dude in your church to be your your spiritual mentor. You know, that's a new hip thing. What about those men's groups? You know, Josh, iron sharpens iron. Uh, the only way we can understand our mates is by talking about them with other men. I thought so. How would you be <laughs> transparent with somebody else if you took a vow of silence like a monk? Man, that would be rough. You couldn't be transparent with anybody. You can't say, you can't say a word. I see a problem with all these groups and things and stuff the church has transformed into as of late. Um, I believe that Yeshua is meant to be our accountability partner. Jesus? He, he is. And people may say, well, where did this term accountability come from? Well. Let's get to the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. This is discussed in Romans 14, 10 through 12. This is where we are to give an account. For we shall all stand, uh -huh. all of us, yeah. before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue okay. shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Okay. 2 Corinthians 5, 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So as we confess our sins to Yeshua, I think we are to be accountable to him, not to man, because man is fallible. Man fails. Man is not perfect. Mm. Man cannot live up to God's standards. Um, but the Holy Spirit within us is supposed to quicken us, is supposed to make us alive, and thus we crucify our flesh daily to overcome. Galatians 5, 24 mm. through 25, And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh mm. with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That's, you know, that's very cool because um, some say the regeneration of my spirit is not enough. Mm. Yes, it is. Some may say, even though I'm a Christian, I still deal with all these sins and problems in my flesh. Well, he gave us the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I spoke by John the Baptizer in Matthew 3, 11, because that fire of God was supposed to burn away the chaff, the impurities. It was supposed to make you overcome that flesh that was flawed until it is uh, glorified someday in heaven. So all this talk about being transparent, Josh, about sharing your sins, confessing your sins to one another. Um, I think that if you're, if you're confessing your sins to one another, that's putting them in a position of God over God. That's God over you. Because okay. are, are we not supposed to just confess our sins to God and He forgives us? I believe we are. But what about mm -hmm. the argument that says mm -hmm. that if I don't tell you, then I can hide it from you and keep doing it? Well, let's look at 1 John 2, 1 through 2. It says, My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. Okay. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So, yeah, you may say, I know that. Messiah hmm. has forgiven all our sins, hasn't he? And, and the entire world sins. But he's our, adv our advocate to the Father. Uh, that means he stands in place of us. When someone wants to judge us, when the, the deceiver uh, says, hey, look at those guys, look what they did. He's saying, no, I covered them with my blood. I have forgiven them. So really, we want a, him, we want Yeshua to be our accountability partner. Now, that doesn't mean, say, for extreme situations where... Yeah, well, addictions. Where there's addictions, like, uh, where people need Demonic help, possession. Demonic possession, need to cast out people. Yeah, you need, 
you need others to help you in a certain uh, circumstances because you need that power to be set free, but it's still God's power that sets you free. Mm -hmm. Still not the power of man. Because Yeshua is your mediator. Because he's our mediator, we don't need that, that confessor system anymore. So are we just supposed to go rogue yeah. and live our lives for ourselves if we're just, you know, no. we don't need to help one another? No, no. <laughs> um, there's still things that we have to do in the, uh, the Bible says and how we relate to one another as believers. Proverbs 27, 17 okay. says, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend and has to go to men's breakfast on Saturdays. So that's what that means. I, I guess I, I got this. <laughs> Guys, what that scripture means is you live your life by example. Yeah. That's all it means. Others will take notice. It, it, it doesn't mean you have to join that men's group and, and that's the only way you can get spiritual is by you know getting under that that's hierarchical system. It, it just means live your life by example and others will follow. I'll stump you, okay? Okay. Matthew 18, 15 through 17 says, okay. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Well, okay. If he hears you, you gained your brother. But if he will not hear you, take you one or two more that by mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established and if he refuses to hear them tell it to the church mm. but if he refuses to even hear the church then let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector okay so people take this scripture out of context they think it means to be transparent it's talking about a specific situation in which another believer wrongs you and the mm. steps it takes to bring restoration to your relationships and to the church and even if he doesn't want that restoration then afterwards it keeps you from living in bitterness and resentment and therefore you're set free so that's not about my netflix q or no, history or anything not okay. at all. galatians 6 1 through 5. Okay. brethren if a man is overtaken in any trespass or trespass you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness yeah. considering yourself lest you also be tempted hmm. bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of christ so we stop right there right bear one another bear burden. his burdens there's nothing after that so yeah everybody no. stops reading there hold on there's another verse <laughs> okay verse 3 says for if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing he deceives himself mm. but let each one examine his own work and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not mm. in one another for each one shall bear his own load very interesting guys this this verse actually is explaining how you're supposed to restore someone who's caught in sin in the church that wants to repent and come back uh, it's not about getting into the nitty gritty details of their sin and knowing all the details because it says uh, check yourself lest you be tempted by the same thing that they felt you know because that's putting the focus on it. a lot of times you've seen the focus on the sin people going in for counseling or whatnot yeah. in the church and then you hear stories about so and so having an affair or falling pulling other people in because we're still all human so we're still yeah. all tempted by things and so I believe mm. that when our focus is placed on the sin or the trespass That's in true. such great detail. Yes. We're in essence giving it authority again over us and somebody else is being tempted by that because we're, we're detailing this out. Peter stared at a wave, he sank. He stared at Jesus, That's right. things got better. Again, we're, where's your focus line in this situation? That's why it says to examine your own works, right. bear your own load, lest you be caught up like others because you're just as susceptible to that damage. Hebrews 10, 24 okay. through 25 says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, mm -hmm. not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the days approaching, this is why you have to go to church. They love that verse. I mean, pastors love that. You skipped church last Sunday. You forsook the assembly of the reverend. Isn't that what that means? That's what they told me. It's not what it means, guys. You have to read all of Hebrews 10 in context. Paul is speaking to the Jews that have been ostracized for their belief in Yeshua. They have been kicked out of their synagogues, kicked out of their families, kicked out of their work environment. And because of that stress and pressure, many of them forsook the faith. Many of them decide to return back to the ways of the law in Judaism. And he says, don't forsake that assembly of the brethren. The, the, that assembly of the people of Yeshua is not about church buildings and stuff because they didn't have church buildings. They, they came to each other's homes to worship together. Uh, it's about uh, not forsaking Yeshua. That's what that verse means. What about mentorship, though? I mean, look at look at Paul and Timothy, right? Wasn't yeah, he well, his mentor? Don't you need well, that to be able well, to Paul, grow? Well, Paul functioned in love to Timothy, and yeah, he was that example to him. But was there an accountability thing going on there? We know in 1 John 2, 26 through 27, it says, These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So that's talking about the Holy Spirit once so, again. So guys, listen to what we're saying. 
We are not advocating that you do not speak to somebody older and wiser. We are not advocating that you don't get advice from your pastor. This is not about being on a life raft out there so that you can get blasted out of the water by Satan and have no perspective. What we're telling you is that you have the full capacity of Jesus Christ living inside of you. And through His Holy Spirit, you can can refrain from sin. You can resist it. You can hear the truth directly to you. This is more so what we're trying to tell you about not feeling that you are incapable of living a holy lifestyle, that you are That's incapable right. of, of uh, achieving uh, freedom from addiction mm. without having to, mm. to have another person That's involved. Right. It's not a bad thing to seek out counsel, but yeah. we're saying that you, don't, you are not dependent upon another person to receive restoration or freedom from an issue. That's true. And that's why, you know, intercessors, they pray for other people. Um, you may ask for someone to pray on your behalf. Um, or to agree with you. You may need that two or more. Uh, little old praying grandma is very powerful. I mean, very you need, uh, you'll need to go alone. And, and having a, you know, a, a spouse, they are meant uh, to be that platform of two or more with you. Right. And there's a lot of uh, problems in marriages and, and, and people say, we've got to go to counseling, we've got to separate into men's groups and women's groups. That brings dissension and division because you're supposed to solve your problems together. And this is, this is why I talk about the family unit being important, yeah. okay? We're not trying to bash men's group at church, women's group at church, that's right. children's church, all those different things. Obviously, they're doing this because they feel that there's content that's appropriate for one group versus yeah. another group. But let's think about w- where you have to live your life. If you are a married couple and you have yeah. children, you're not going to live your life in the men's group, meaning you're not spending every day when things are hard, when things are challenging with those boys eating donuts. <laughs> you're actually living your life out with your wife. You're yeah. living your life out with your children. With your family. So yeah. isn't it more logical that if we're trying to learn how to live together, if we're trying to learn how to overcome certain things, yeah. that we deal with these things with the person as we're going to live it out with. Family unit. Think of couples therapy. Yeah. You don't go to couples therapy alone. It's called couples therapy. <laughs> so you're going together for a man and a woman to it. learn how to exist together as a couple. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're talking about the fact that there is not a necessity to split things up. We don't want to get mm-hmm. fragmented into where the only group that understands me is another man of the same issue with the same mustache and everything else. He knows me best. My wife doesn't understand me because really, even mm-hmm. though it's not intended, that can bring dissension and segregation because sometimes those groups can become, well, girls just don't get it. And oh, well, guys will never get it and blah, blah, blah. They're not all like that. We yeah. love your groups, learn, grow together, feel understood, but know that you were meant to face life with the people that God placed in it. You yeah. were meant to face it with your spouse, with your kiddos together as one unit. You were meant to listen to Yeshua as the final call He's on what you say or do. He's giving you the authority over death, hell, the grave, sin, Krispy Kreme, yeah. everything. Love you, Krispy Kreme. Bad choices sometimes. But he's given you that authority. So you don't have to derive it from the priest or from a group or someone else. So Yeshua is your mediator, guys. What is the fine line, the litmus test when you're trying to figure out, should I get prayer? Should I confess this to someone? Are you relying on someone else to solve your problems or are you relying on God? That's, that's the fine line. Are you just trying to get someone to agree with you? You're stronger together. Are you trying to dump your problems on them so that they can take care of it and you'll be set free? I think you will all know the answer to that in your heart because you do have the Holy Spirit living within you. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Only my okay. voice they're going to follow. And guys, we got nothing else to say. Fidji, stop spinning. He's ready. I think it's time to go. Do you need to talk to another fidget spinner about your problems, about how we're always spinning you too much? He says he's lonely. He's not lonely. He's lonely. I love him. He needs a, a, a fidget, the girl fidget spinner. <laughs> <laughs>